हेलो पुलिस स्टेशन प्लीज टेल मी देर इज बीन थेफ्ट इन आर सीतापुरम एंड सरबैया हाउस प्लीज कम इमीडिएटली ओके वी आर कमिंग How dare you? You work for me, and you're robbing from me, Master. My people have been starving for two days. I had little choice. How can police sleep in, in, in our village? See, this fellow is the thief. He stole grains and pulses from my house. A police case against such a petty thing, sir? Of course, we'll go ahead if you wish to. What is this? Why do I see cops in our village? Why is he being beaten? He has committed a theft. That's why I've called the police. Inspector sir, for 25 years cops never entered our village. We have been solving all our problems by ourselves. I don't wish to have you here. You may leave now. We know how to handle this. Okay sir. We have no problem if you are okay. I'll take your leave. Sir bhaiya, what is wrong with you? Don't you know the rule of the village? Why did you call the cops then? Since Mr. Simhadri was not around, I called the police. Now what did I do wrong? But why are you blaming me? Why you let go of the thief? Okay, what was stolen? Oh, he stole food grains and pulses from my house. Don't you feel shameful? He is your employee. Without stealing any valuable things lying around, he only stole grains, which means you are the reason behind his family starving. Whatever it is, he has still committed a theft, isn't it? Today he stole grains. Tomorrow he might steal something else. It is not wise to let him go, my dear. Oh, stop it! Never ever call me, my dear. Shikram, what do you think we should do? What should we do? Five bags of rice and two bags of pulses. If that is given to Somaya, I think it should suffice. You got it, sir, Baya. That is also my verdict. I'm telling this to all of you. Furthermore, if police enters our village, I'll take strict action. Listen, Somaya. From tomorrow, you come to my house to work. Thus, the panchayat ends. What is this, sir, Baya? You may be his friend since childhood, but Simadri values Shekaram more than you. You are his relative, but relatives hardly matter to him. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Every dog has a day. My dog's day will also come one day. Don't know when that day will come. Shekaram handles everything at Simadri's house, fields, and also the gardens. Shekaram has the last word in everything. Come, let's go. Shekram, how is the yield this year? We had timely rains, so looks like our crop is profitable too. You are right, sir. This is from the coconut farm. This income is from the sale of grains. And this, I trust you, Shekram. Don't I know about you? Please don't call me, sir. I don't like it. I liked it when you were friendlier. Then we were uh, so young we used to just address ourselves casually how can i do that now while both of them were chit chatting sir bhaiya also joins them my dear how are you yeah i am fine but why are you here now nothing much you know my son kartik don't you he has completed bsc agriculture so i was thinking if he works for you he might be of good help for now i don't need anybody Shekaram looks after everything anyways if there's a requirement I'll let you know anyways I don't trust you you're not an honest person you never trusted your own people fine i understand what do you say shekaram he has completed his uh, bsc agriculture so what should we do as you wish sir we'll look into it later anyway you're looking after everything why do we need sarbhaiya meddling into this Their friendship is getting stronger with every passing day. Shekhar manages the day-to-day -day affairs of Simhadri. While things go smoothly, one day Good morning Simhadri sir. I have some work and have to go to town. I'll be back in a couple of days. Anything wrong? You're leaving so suddenly? You know my brother-in-law? You see, my sister's husband, he has fallen sick and admitted to the hospital. I need to go and lend a helping hand to my sister you see okay take care then if you need any money you can ask the accountant i don't need any for now i have some but if i do need i'll let you know okay i leave now sir shekaram leaves to take care of his sister unfortunately situations force him to stay longer than 2 days for 15 days 
Meanwhile, Simhadri suffers chest pain and undergoes surgery. Shekharam is missing at the moment. Sarabhaiya attends to him full time. He takes advantage of the situations and steals money from Simhadri's house. Sarabhaiya, it's been five days since I've seen Shekharam. I even had an operation and returned home. He didn't even come to visit me once. What could have gone wrong with him? Oh, nothing is wrong with him. He's just sitting at home. He is deliberately avoiding you. Fact is, he does not like you staying healthy and happy. Now stop being a crook. I know Shekharam better than you do. Oh no, sir. I saw him while coming here. He was happily sitting on the porch and sipping tea. Listen to this. The 50,000 rupees you wanted me to keep safe has gone missing. How can money disappear? Didn't you keep it in the Almira? No, brother. I'm not able to recall where I have kept the money. I see. You see, Shekharam hurriedly left for town. I'm sure he must have stolen money and gone to town. But what can I do now? He looks after all the accounts, you see. God knows how much he must be stealing by fudging the accounts, you see. Sarabhaiya succeeds in sowing seeds of suspicion in Simhadri's mind against Shekharam. That Shekharam has not visited him after the surgery only strengthens the suspicion. Unassuming and innocent, Shekharam meanwhile returns to Simhadri. Oh, you stay out of this house, Shekharam. Today, Simhadri does not even want to see you. What is wrong? What did I do? What more do you have to do? Simhadri had severe chest pain and had to be operated upon. But you did not even come to meet him then. So why are you coming to meet him now? And that day on the pretext of going to town, you stole 50,000 rupees from this house. Oh no, I will never cheat Simhadri, sir. I don't even know that he was operated upon. I'm just coming back from town. I just need to speak to Simhadri, sir, once. He has had enough of your services. Please leave now. He doesn't even want to meet you. And hardly he wants to talk to you. Hearing to Savitri's words, Shekharam is deeply hurt. He leaves from there. He knows that this is all Sharabhaya's ploy. He wants to wait for the right time to come. We need someone to take care of our affairs. He needs to be really honest, you see. As long as Shekharam was there, there was no issue. Now I don't know on whose shoulder to put these responsibilities. Dear, we have Sharabhaya. He is a very crooked fellow. I really can't trust him. You can't say this. My brother took care of you when you were severely sick. Why don't you call him and talk to him once? As Savitri said, Simhadri heats, consults Sarbhaya. Things are falling in place. In excitement, he visits Simhadri. Oh, hello, dear. I believe you asked to see me. Yes. After Shekharam left to look after all the agriculture and other affairs, I was thinking we need a dependable person. That's easy, my dear. I told you before. But you believed on Shekharam more than your family? That's okay. I don't mind these things. My son has completed his BSc Agriculture. I believe he is the correct person to take care of your affairs, you see. Fine. Ask him to meet me. But if there's any discrepancy, I'll take strict action. He got to be careful. Oh, you don't have to worry, dear. I'm here to take care of things, no. Since then, Sarbhaya and his son Karthik have been managing Simhadri's business affairs. Fudging accounts and giving false reports, the father and son Dio supports funds. Time passes by. Shekharam's trustworthy Rangaya talks to Shekharam and says, Are you taking notice of this Shekharam? That Sarbhaya and his son together, they are cheating Simhadri like anything. They are fudging all accounts and creating wealth for themselves. Yes, yes, I have noticed everything. They are making a fool out of poor Samadri. But he has lost trust on me, you see. Okay, I'll ask you a favor. Will you do it for me? Okay, tell me. Hello, Sarbaya. You and your brother-in-law don't get along, but you're working together. Oh, yeah. We always get together. We are one big family, you see. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Now you're duping me. Don't I know how much you hate your brother-in-law? Like you, Shekharam also just hates Simadri. Really? Why does Shekhar have a change of heart? You see, Shekharam did a lot for Simadri's business. Just because he was not here for 15 days, Shekharam forgot the past, humiliated him and threw him out of the house. I tell you, Shekharam is so hurt, he is bidding his time to take revenge on Simadri. Is that so? This means Shekharam is also now a part of our gang. While both of them were talking to each other, Shekharam joins them. Hey, Sarbaya, how is your business running nowadays? What business? I've just joined my brother-in-law, you see. 
Nothing special apart from that. Oh, don't I know you, sir, brother? But for how long will you be fudging accounts and stealing small amounts? Don't you want to earn something for your son? What will you leave for him tomorrow? All his life he'll just be a manager. What can I do? Tell me. We are always at our brother-in-law's mercy. Fine. I thought I'll give you a good idea, but that does not matter now. See you then. Oh, come on now, Shikram. Tell me what's on your mind. Whatever crops Imadri gets, he sells them once every three years. Apart from that, the money from the coconut plantation that will be released in four days. Yeah. So what? What? So what? Are you really so dumb? Just think for a minute. The whole amount belongs to you and you only. Oh, don't I have to give accounts for that money? I can maybe embezzle a little here and there, but the whole amount—that's not possible. Oh, you're not using your brain, sir, Baya. But if you listen to me, I have a plan. Okay, okay. Tell me. Let me hear what's on your mind. Once the money reaches you, you collect the whole amount, then stack the money somewhere. Tell your brother-in-law that your house was robbed. Anyway, your brother-in-law has a strict rule that no villager should go to the police station. Now, how can he go there? To complain to the police about the robbery. Oh yeah, this idea seems to have some merit. But why should I trust you? How do I know you will not go to my brother-in-law and inform him? Then if I am caught, after being embarrassed and insulted so much, I am looking for revenge. I thought revenge would be easier through you. Even you were insulted in front of everybody many times. That's true, but after ice cream robbery, he doesn't believe me and gets the villagers to check my house. Then. I will anyway be caught, won't I? Oh, that! Then you can park the money at my place. Simadri is a man of honor. He will never enter my house after things have quieted down. You come and collect your money, no? Oh, yeah, that's a nice idea, Shekharam. I say it's a very nice idea. Okay, I'll do that. Sir, Bhaiya executes Shekharam's plan, and the money he received after selling the cops and the coconut, he stores the money at Shekharam's house. He informs Simhadri that the money has been stolen. Simhadri is shocked and suffers a heart attack yet again. Shekharam, have you heard? Simhadri suffered from another heart attack. Is that so? Unable to control his emotions. Shekharam rushes to visit his friend Simhadri. Simhadri is meeting his old friend after a long time, so he shares the state of affairs with him. I know everything. Your money is not stolen. It is with me. Here, take your money. Shekharam narrates the whole episode to Simhadri. I had to do this to enlighten you, but didn't expect you to have a heart attack. I am so sorry. You have to forgive me. In spite of all your sincerity, I drove you away. But then, from the beginning itself, I never trusted Sarvaya. This way, the estranged friends meet after a long time.